Welcome back everyone. Got a new vid from me for you. Uh, nothing intended for legal purposes. Nothing meant to teach anything illegal. I'm talking about history, uh, past experiences. And uh, this video is from a donation uh, from Malo. So thank you Malo. And he wanted to talk about uh, those short squatty dogs that we that most people have seen throughout the last, I don't know, several decades, 60, 70 years probably. You know, where they come from, how they originated, you know, uh, I'm sure throughout the past, way past history of the dog, there's been dogs like that, you know, even though uh, with a lot of the pictures you see, you don't see that, you know. It's hard for me to think that it just popped up or was developed because uh, even if it did pop up or was just developed in the last several decades, the influence or genetics has to come from somewhere. You know, people say uh, that it's dwarfism. It could be, but the dogs range in, from very small to uh, very large dogs, meaning, you know, the dogs themselves are not dwarves, even though they look that way. I'm not a geneticist. Maybe maybe it is dwarfism. But uh, where you see it heavily is in what's called bully sun dogs, you know. But to be clear, it's not a bully sun trait. It's not in the background that I've noticed of bully sun dogs. Where it comes out in bully sun dogs is the females they were bred to. And... Uh, including Long's Tuffy and Long's Baby, right? And in uh, the males would be, you know, uh, uh, Hyde Satchmo Bully, Hyde Satchmo, Mexico's Hunter Red. They were all litter mates to Long's Baby and Long's Tuffy. Now, what's interesting to note is with that particular breeding, which is Hunter Sam to Hunter's Tana, right on the bottom side the tana side you see a lot of those dogs they come from a lot of the ed crenshaw breeding but the sire hunter sam his sire which was canard's buck was built like that also and buck goes back to hennenberger's toad or sparks hunky you know the famous dog that beat champion willie lingo from cuba in two hours and 17 minutes Kennard's Buck or Black and Tan, he was built that way, that short, bow-leggy, kind of long body, you know. They have nice heads on them, thick bones, thick, heavy muscled, if you want to say, you know. And uh, with Tana, that's a lot of the Ed Crenshaw breeding. And it, again, if you research history, you look at a lot of the Ed Crenshaw dogs, that's that's uh, the way a lot of them were built. Uh, Carver's Diamond or Steinberg's Diamond was built that way. Ren uh, Reno, Major, you know, those dogs, short, squatty. At that time, they were known for being very rough, very hard biting, strong dogs, you know, uh, big teeth, big heads. Now, Hunter Sam... Red Buck, Satch, and all them, you know, they, they're kind of staff looking. They have more leg under them, right? But but uh, they still on the shorter side. And even if they're more straight leg, that bow leggy stuff is behind them. So that's why it comes out. And it's pretty prominent or dominant because you see them, you know, I did and a lot of people did saw them in a lot of the bully sun dogs bred that way and you'll even see it a little bit in dogs like benny bob bully sun jr you know you also see it in the bully sun arts missy dogs uh, because arts missy was a sister to boomerang had a lot of that same ed crenshaw blood she was kind of built that way not so pronounced but still kind of short-legged and a little bit bow leggy you know so uh and you know another thing to note is you know 
Hunter Sam on his top side of the lease, or, or throughout his ped, anyways. It goes back to mostly Komasinski and Kobe stuff. So it could be that the Komasinski Kobe stuff, at least on Hunter Sa Hunter's uh, uh, Sam side, that cross of Komasinski, which Komasinski is a lot of Kobe blood, anyways, right? Uh, that could be why Buck turned out that way. You know, maybe that mix made him kind of short and squatty too, right? And then you put it with the Tana side. Uh, uh, you you get you know it's it's compounded. You know, you get more of it. You know, Hunter's Tana, Meanie hides Meanie. That that stuff. Uh, you know, goes back. A lot of that stuff is Kobe light in our blood, anyways. So whether it was a Kobe influence or the Kamasinski cross or Ed Crenshaw, whatever his selection was, you know, a lot of them dogs come out that way. And with the Bully Sun dogs, it's real pronounced. You see it in Midnight Cowboy. You see it in in uh, uh, um, what's his name? It's the Bully Sun to Long's Tuffy breeding. Um, I'll think of it in a minute. But Midnight Cowboy, Shivo Dogs, Davis's Piggy. Uh, you see a lot of that. Anywhere where that uh, Stomper, Hall Stomper, build like that. Him and Midnight Cowboy resemble each other a lot. You know, short, squatty, bow leggy, long body, you know, thick, low to the ground, low center of gravity. And again, you see that in a lot of those dogs bred that way. You know, Bobby Hall had a bunch of them. The ones I had that came from him and Ken Click were that way. Most of them. Some of them, you know, had a couple of them had more leg under them. But Toadie was that way. Bully was that way. Uh, just that short, squatty, powerful dogs. You know, very intense dogs. So. Uh, that was proliferated. You should see it in the Shorty Pearl. You see it in the, in a lot of those dogs bred down from that, you know, the Happy Jack and, and, uh, Apple Jack and, uh, Smiling Jack, a lot of that stuff, you know, Champion Cowgirl and, uh, a lot, just a lot of dogs that had that build, you know, some people like it, some people don't like it. And because of the Crenshaw stuff that was originally like that, or a lot of them were originally like that, you see that in the white dogs, right? They're built that way too. Champion Bullshit was that way. Uh, Champion Alien. You see a lot of them. Mighty Dog, you know, to some extent, you know. Uh, I saw a bunch of them that were built that way, especially the, uh, uh, the uh, tighter bred white dogs, you know. The ones with crosses, they would have more leg under them, but still had a lot of those features, mainly the head and big ass teeth, you know. And uh, uh, it's interesting to note the Bully Son, Eli Jr. dogs, even Stomper Jr., who is out of Eli Jr. and uh, Long's Tuffy, was built like that. Stomper is Bully Son, Long's Tuffy, Eli Jr. is, I mean, Stomper Jr. was out of uh, Eli Jr. and Long's Tuffy. Same mother, the sires are brothers. One's named Stomper, the other Stomper Jr., which you would think that's a son or something like that. It's not. They just, that's the name they picked for him. But Stomper Jr. was bred that way too. You don't see a lot of the, you know, Eli Jr. or even Eli dogs bred that way. Right, most of them have, you know, whether you want to say art or, or the Nigarino stuff or, uh, you know, um, uh, night train stuff. You know, you see some of it, you know, depending on the females they they were bred to. And even, you know, like I mentioned in the last video, you I saw it in some of the Nigarino bully sun crosses. They were like that, you know, Joey and 357 Magnum, you know. But, uh, in my opinion, at least for the most part, they come out like that if it's 
heavy on the Ed Crenshaw side, uh, like the White Dogs were, or uh, the Long's Baby, Long's Toughy stuff, you know, Midnight Cowboy, Stomper, uh, you know, Bully Son Jr., Benny Bob kind of stuff, you know. You see that because of the females that are included in there or the Bully Son Arts Missy stuff, you know. Bobby Hall had a female named uh, Sharon Get a Hope, right? Who was off of Jeremiah, Holtz Jeremiah, and another Bully Son type bred female. Uh, she was built like that too, short, squatty like that. Uh, Danny Burton conditionally handled, conditioned and handled her. I know she had at least one win and just had that, that same build, that same look. So I'm very familiar with it. So you have it, like I said, in those bloodlines and also with the white dogs, you know, uh, going back to they have, they're heavily influenced on uh, Crenshaw blood through Crenshaw snow and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, all that has a lot of that stuff. You know, so like I said, some people like it, some people don't like it, you know, uh, and you know, how does that build function would be a question, you know, you, you look at it and you think, well, it's a detriment, it hampers them, they can't move properly, they're not fluid, they're, they're, they it can, you know, they're short, hard to get in, a dog can hold them out, a dog can outmaneuver them, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, a dog that, that's taller has better leverage as far as, you know, up and down. All that stuff is true. So why are they, you know, how are they effective? How, how, how come people liked it so much, you know? And why did they keep it going? And what's, what's the benefits of it? Well, just like some fighters who are built on the shorter line, shorter, you know, shorter in height, uh, you know, on, on the shorter side, anyway, shorter in height, shorter arms, shorter legs. But most fighters like that are stockily built, you know. And uh, it's like anything else. How do they use that to their advantage? What are some of the advantages those dogs have? The first thing that most people will say, again, if you're familiar with them, if you've seen a bunch of them, what stands out is their mouth. A lot of them dogs bite hard and not so much the white dogs per se it doesn't mean the white dogs don't have mouth but they're more of a patient type of dog you know and the bite with them a lot of them comes out later but you know I've seen plenty of white dogs if you start fast on them they'll, they'll pick up that pace and they'll start fast too and then it's just a whirlwind you know but that's not really their style. Crossed ones, then it's a little bit different. Even though bullshit, alien, Jap, dogs like that were, were outcrossed, they still exhibited that bow-leggy frame. Long body, bow-legged, you know, short. But uh, they had them big teeth, and when they wanted to, they, they could bite for sure. Now, some of the people that use that blood, the Ed Crenshaw stuff, besides Ed Crenshaw himself, were Freddie Jones, Leo Kennard. Uh, later on, you have Phil Dibble, Ben Montana. You have uh, Tom Griego, you know, uh, a lot of that. A lot of uh, old-time dog guys use that blood. Now, when Kennard and, and Crenshaw and uh, Freddie Jones had it, you know, a lot of them dogs were winning in short times. Reno and Major, you know, Diamond uh, lost a long match, about two hours to Freddie Jones. Uh, Freddie Jones Major, you know, it's the same Major, whether it's Crenshaw, Jones, Kennard, whatever, same Major. Same thing with Kennard's Buck. Uh, uh, sometimes you'll see Kennard's Buck, and it's the son of, it's the son of Dybo, you know brother to Spike and Jeff. This is a different buck. He was a black and tan dog, you know, uh, that Kennard had. But going back to that history, a lot of short fights, a lot of hard biting dogs. 
and uh, uh, later on as they progressed through the years they were more they turned more into a steady paced dog rough durable long distance you know but they had some that were long distance back then Freddie Jones uh, Nevada Smith you know he had lost to Low Lehman a few times and he had lost to the his little Lido dog who was a four-time winner but he kept going at him and going at him and he finally beat uh, I'm pretty sure it was Lido he beat Low Lehman's Lido in two hours with Nevada Smith another Ed Crenshaw bred dog you know so some of them like Diamond went two hours some of them you know uh, Freddie Jones Bart he beat Diamond he went two hours and he had a short fight before that, and then he went on to lose to Pitt General, you know, but he was a very good dog. The, David Devine speak, spoke highly of him to me. He was just a top-notch dog who, under those circumstances, he lost that day, you know, uh, to Pitt General. And most people have heard about Pitt General, a devastating dog, dog a cannibal, you know. But, uh, and then later on, people like Benny, in California and even Cat and Company to some degree and Jesse and Company you know different people have that Ed Crenshaw bred stuff and like I said the white dogs that's what they kind of developed into more of a longer distance going dog uh, rough and durable very game known for gameness some of the dogs in the past weren't known for being real game you know but through breeding and like that you know maybe they had because they added the bullet blood or whatever it was it kind of changed their style you know like the white dogs more patient and long distance heavy on the endurance side and durability and toughness you know thick skin and that kind of stuff all those good traits we talk about and it's also my opinion because that blood was so old not meaning old bad but old good had a lot of breeding behind it had a lot of had a lot of uh, solid dogs behind it it crossed good with a lot of different stuff you know uh, i mentioned the bullet blood crossed good with that the lapisse bullet you know uh buster crosses you know so there you have the influence of eli and or uh, bully son and arts missy again Cross good with Heinzel, cross good with Bolio, you know, cross good with Red Boy stuff, you know, Corvino stuff. Uh, off, off hand, I can't uh, recall which Corvino dogs, you know, but I remember back in the day uh, seeing some peds with that stuff crossing at the Ed Crenshaw stuff, you know, unless I'm mistaken, we'd have to do some research, but it just crossed good with a lot of the different bloods today you know and again the boomerang stuff has that in it you know and uh, a lot of the Ronnie Hyde stuff uh, has a lot of that Jake Kaler blood has that in it you know you have the Red Lady and Stu Fowler and you know so Bert Sorrel stuff has it in there you know a lot of people saw the value in it and uh, used it you know uh, and in my opinion, it, it, it has a lot to do with that gameness and durability. So maybe it was the Bert Sorrel stuff, the Stu Fowler stuff that, that Bert had, along with, the, you know, the boomerang stuff he had and the Corvino stuff he had, how he mixed it all together. Those breedings were made, you know. So you have that particular style, rough, durable, like that, steady, you know. However, on the Stomper Junior, Stomper, Midnight Cowboy stuff, you know, uh, 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 Benny Bob and Bully Son Junior and Sharon and all that, you know, those dogs maintained and were different than what I just mentioned. Those Bully Son dogs were known for being hard mouth, very powerful, very intense, scream in the corner, strong. So, in either case, that's how they made that build to their advantage. In one case, it's the long, steady determination, rough, tough, like that. And in the other case, just like a Mike Tyson or a, or a 
Joe Frazier, you know, that type of explosive power, hard mouth, you know, that's what impressed people. They could get inside on a dog, do a lot of damage, and they have a lot of short fights. Doesn't mean they didn't go distance either. Happy Jack went two hours and 37 minutes against Champion Head and won. Uh, even Rascal Jr. himself went two hours. Midnight Cowboy went two hours, you know. So depending on uh, the dog itself, who's conditioning them, their opponent, you know, a lot of them had short fights, sometimes minutes. But they could also go the distance, you know. The little bully sunbred dog I went into, named Bug Eye, went two hours and 43 minutes with me uh, using uh, Clayton Blood, you know. And he was that type, hard mouth dog, strong, like that. So when I say minutes, you know, I've seen him go eight minutes, 17 minutes, anywhere from anything under a half hour, you know. Hard mouth dog, open deep gashes, or just wreck stuff, break it, uh, uh, disable you, you know. Uh, a lot of them like the shoulders, chest, brisket, known for going to the stifle. Uh, most of the bully sun bread dogs I had, they would either go right to the stifle or that's where they would end up or back and forth, you know, but just rough dogs. That's where I see the advantage that those dogs have. If a dog can keep them out, outmaneuver them like a bolio dog, you know, just too fast and too, too speedy, you know, too good of balance, you know, or, uh, you know, a different dog like the Daibo dogs, you know, even though they have, they have Daibo influence in them, both the Ed Crenshaw stuff and the Bully Sun stuff has Daibo influence in it, you know. They they weren't built like the Daibo dogs, you know, like Jimmy Boots, taller, longer, uh, not taller, longer, but taller, a lot of leg under them, thin waist, deep chest, you know. People, honestly, they prefer that type of dog because of the leverage, because of the balance, you know, because of the strength. But the little, little dogs make no mistake, man. They're strong if you got a good one. And if they have a hard mouth and they can get in there, a lot of times it didn't it didn't last too long. And when I mean heavy damage, just like I described, heavy, heavy damage. Open you up, crush you, you know. That's where their forte was, you know. And again, depending on the conditioner, if they had to go uh, some distance, they could do that too. Some of them can't. They're just they're just hampered that way. Short on air, short on endurance, you know. But that's all to do with breeding. That's all to do with the individual itself, and it's all to do with the conditioner itself too. If you know how to condition them dogs for power and some endurance, you can get that out of them. If you don't, if the dog doesn't pace itself and he th blows his wad, if he doesn't do the damage uh, early enough, yeah, they can get, be beat. You know? There's a way to beat them. And there's a way even if you have the per you know, perfect style to beat them, you could still lose because of those advantages they have. That's why people like the Eli blood so much or the Bully Sun blood so much or the art stuff so much. That's one of the main things about them. They have other attributes. They have other, they have some flaws. They have other positives about them, you know, like thick skin and heavy, thick bone and hard muscle and all that. Uh, but it's their mouth, at least for me, that, that what was the most important thing about them. You know, that's not everything about them, but everybody <coughs> likes a hard mouth dog, whether they admit it or not. Or not. And uh, you're impressed when you see it, you know. There's a lot of different ways to win a fight. There's a lot of different ways to come out on top. And for me, uh, that, that helps them do that, you know. Doesn't mean they don't have heart. A lot of, I see plenty of them and had some that had heart too, you know. And, you know, I kind of go over that, That's, you know. One of my favorite bloodlines from the past was a bully son stuff, and I cover it 
quite a bit of it uh, in my book, you know, the good and bad. I try to do that with everything, even in all these videos. Everybody knows I'm a honey bunch, Jeep guy. I talk about their flaws too, you know. And I do so because, you know, I want the truth out there, at least from my experience. I want to be honest, and I don't want to pretend like any bloodline is superior to another. And if you recognize flaws in your breeding program, you can do the best you can to eliminate them. At least, you know, uh, you're not going to totally get rid of anything because it's all in there. It's all going to pop up at some time, but you can eliminate it as much as possible. So whether it's a Bully Son dog or Eli Jr. dog or a straight Boudreaux dog or a Rascal dog, you know, my focus was on getting that particular stuff to throw mouth in my stuff, you know. Because uh, Jeep dogs on their own, they do lack mouth. Uh, and and uh, all that blood, whether it's an Eli dog or Eli Carver cross or Bully Son Bolio cross or the Niggerino stuff or whatever, you know, uh, that that's that's one of the main things about them is they have uh, mouth or they have the ability to throw mouth along with whatever flaws they have you can eliminate those they're very impressive dogs you know Eli Carver one of the oldest as far as today is concerned crosses you know that's around and whether you're talking about Chinaman or whether you're talking about uh, the Nigorino stuff, you know, or any of the LG or Banjo or like that, you know, they, they have different bloodlines in there, whether it's the Stompanato Arts Missy stuff, you know, uh, it's, it's an Eli Carver cross or Carver Eli cross, you know, um, and it's just, just, uh, something that is proven to work and you know it, it's got a good track record a lot of top guys used it you know they were all over the place so and within that you know and i tell people this too you know you got the short squatty dogs you know my friend says you know that people that criticize it he says hey as long as they can scratch that's all that matters you know but and, and that's true you know but uh within that you know you have you have uh this influence of the short squatty stuff and all it takes is one breeding breed it to a bitch or breed it to a male that has some leg under them and you'll get more leg under and and hopefully you'll retrain all those good traits that speed and power intensity and mouth and they stand a little taller you know it's not hard Right, that influence will always be there. Within one litter, you could have some that are taller and one or two that are short. Still, you know, but it's it, it's not like that you have to go through years of breeding to get rid of it. Or if you don't like it, you know, uh, when you tighten up on it, that seems to come out more that short squatty stuff. But you throw a little cross in there or something that's has that stuff with a cross in it, you'll get leg. It's almost inevitable that it will happen. You know, so that's why I don't knock it too much, you know. It's just, you know, I was impressed with them when I first saw them. I was impressed with the ones I had, you know. And uh, it's not that hard to fix, if you want to put it that way. Or uh, some other stuff, you know, it's really hard to get rid of or correct, you know, depending on what the trait is, you know. It just seemed like with those bully sun dogs, you could, it's not that hard to get leg under so that's, that's uh, kind of the pros and cons, you know, about the blood. That's a little bit of the history, you know. Again, some people like it, some people don't. Just like some people, you know, I always say I have a love-hate relationship, you know. I love a lot of the things about them. I hate some of the stuff that goes along with it, you know, the boy sun dogs, man biters, or, you know, a lot. Sometimes that blood were not hard workers. They were lazy, late starters, cold dogs. <clears throat> but again you have hard mouth intensity power muscle bone thick skin
big teeth, you know. So it's not going anywhere. And the Eli blood itself, probably the most, you know, sought after, popular, whatever you want to call it, uh, blood around because of those positive factors about it. You can hardly find a dog today that doesn't have some Eli influence in it, even if it's way back. So you take it for what it is and, uh, you know, make the breedings uh, that you like. Uh, you can even, you know, like me, I prefer maybe a quarter of that stuff with my stuff, you know. Not real heavy on that side. Some people prefer real heavy on that side and a quarter uh, out of something else, you know. Some people like 75, 25, some, you know, that's a three-quarter, quarter. Some people like less. Some people like 60, 40, you know. Some people like 50, 50, you know. But if you're going to make it a foundation for your blood, know all the traits, do all the history, do all the research, you know. Know what you're getting into. Know what to expect from that blood when you get it, whether it's the Bully Sun stuff, or the White Dogs, or the Ed Crenshaw blood, or the Boomerang stuff, whatever it is, you know, learn about it, do your research, look at the pros and cons, and if the pros outweigh the cons, feel free to use it. Make your breedings, see if it works, if you like it, you'll keep it in there. Even if it's lesser of an influence, you know, you can do that, keep the positives in there, Eliminate as much as the negatives you can, whether you want a quarter of it or three quarters of it, however you go about doing it. So here's, you know, something. It's a good topic, something that always comes up, something that's always talked about. It's one of the most pro and con topics within the breed that's, that's brought up and talked about. So thanks again, Senor Malo, and uh, for this topic. And everybody feel free to comment say what you like or don't like about it and uh, we'll have a discussion thank you